1978, we got the pleasure of seeing a comedy film that was directed by John Landis and written by Harold Ramis. That movie was National Lampoon's Animal House. It stars the amazing John Belushi, Peter Rygert, Tim Matheson, John Vernon, Verna Bloom, Thomas Hulse, Stephen First, and Donald Sutherland. It's all about this troublemaking fraternity whose members completely challenged the authority of the dean of the fictional Faber College. The 28-year-old John Belushi was an established star, but he had never yet appeared in a film. He gained all his popularity and fame as being one of the original cast members of Saturday Night Live. Several of the actors that you see that are cast as college students were just beginning their film careers. People like Karen Allen and Kevin Bacon can be seen just starting in the world of film. This is one of the most successful American film comedies of all time. The producers were looking for a setting that they could use as the campus of the fictional Faber College where the crazy annex of the Delta fraternity could be played out. They found this area in Eugene, Oregon. Originally, they tried to use the University of Missouri, but they were turned down. Universal approached the University of Oregon in September of 77. The college came to an agreement with the studio that in return for $20,000, they could film there as long as they didn't identify what the university was in the film. The studio also made agreements with two fraternities to use their houses that were located just off campus. In late October of that year, 55 cast and crew members arrived at the Roadway Inn in the nearby town of Springfield. Then they held auditions for extras at the university's union building on October 18th, and 150 men and 50 women were chosen to appear in the film. They earned a whopping $2.30 an hour for their work in it. The production company told all the men to go get haircuts so they would look the part of college students from 1962. A local barbershop in this area provided these haircuts after a Hollywood stylist proved inadequate to do the job. Filming began on October 24th at the Sigma Nu House, where most of the interior scenes of the Delta House took place. The Dexter Lake Club, which is 20 miles east of Eugene, was the location for the road trip scene, where four Deltas take their dates to hear their favorite R&B group, Otis Day and the Nights. During this time, Belushi made friends with a Portland blues musician named Curtis Salgado, and he's credited with help sparking Belushi's enthusiasm for the urban blues, which also contributed to the creation of the Blues Brothers. The Universal Pictures president at the time objected strongly to this Dexter Lake Club scene, and he completely interrupted it at a screening of the film, and he ordered that scene to be removed immediately, claiming that it would cause race riots in theaters. Landis went on to screen the film for Richard Pryor, who ended up writing a note to the Universal Pictures president telling him how funny this movie is, and that he needs to leave the script alone and intact. Now, one of the most famous scenes in the film is John Belushi's performance in the cafeteria. This entire scene was completely improvised. While they were filming, John began piling food on his tray, and the director urged the camera operator to just stay with him. He knew that something big was going to happen. The famous I'm a zit gag was also completely improvised, and the reaction that you see from the cast is completely genuine. Now, Donald Sutherland made a big mistake in this movie. He was convinced that it wasn't going to do well at all, that it didn't have any potential. He originally was offered a percentage of the gross, or he could get a flat fee of 75000 for his three days of work. He took the upfront payment. Had he taken the gross percentage, that would have been worth an additional three to four million. Now, believe it or not, the only damage that was really done to the fraternity house was when John Belushi makes a hole in the wall with the guitar. 
But instead of repairing this damage, the fraternity placed a frame around the hole and had an engraved brass tag put there to commemorate the filming of the project. Now, Karen Allen reveals some really interesting trivia about her nude scene in the film. The director wanted her to bare her bottom while filming. She was pretty reluctant to do this. As a matter of fact, she was real reluctant to do it. But in comes Donald Sutherland to save the day. He offered to bear his butt too to try to make her feel more comfortable. After he said he would do this, she gave up her objections to it and decided that if Donald Sutherland can do this, I can bear mine too. All of the Delta House actors partied together almost every night. But John Landis, being aware of John Belushi's problems with partying, he decided to keep him separate by lodging him with his wife in a house a few miles away from the set. Landis really wanted him to remain sober throughout the shoot. Believe it or not, Belushi did host a few parties at the house, but he stayed completely clean because he saw this film as a great career opportunity. It was after this popular film made it big that he started taking a nosedive. The scene where John is teaching everyone the dirty lyrics of the Kingsman's 1963 song, Louie Louie, is based on an actual investigation that was conducted by the FBI from 1963 to 1965. The agency spent all this time trying to decode this song because of numerous complaints by religious and ultra-conservative groups saying that profanity and obscenity was aimed at teenagers by being hidden in the muffled lyrics. The agency eventually announced that they couldn't find any obscene words in the song. Now, there's one bit that was deleted from the original script and was never actually filmed. It included a parade bust that was destroyed at the climax of the film. That bust was supposed to be of John F. Kennedy, who would have been president in 1962, the year the film takes place. The head on the float would have damage to it similar to those that were suffered by President Kennedy when he was assassinated in November of 63. Landis decided to cut this idea out completely because he felt the tone of the gag was just way too offensive. And I think that was a smart move. Now, a lot of people blame this movie for the decline and the fall of the National Lampoon magazine. After the immense success of this movie at the box office, various Hollywood studios and producers began to offer jobs to the best Lampoon writers. When they realized that they could make much, much more money writing movie scripts than writing for the Lampoon, they left for Hollywood. But it just so happens that most of these writers and the projects that they worked on in Hollywood never amounted to much. And it hurt their careers as writers as much as it did the magazine in an effort to prepare for their roles. And despite being warned numerous times about mixing with the students that were on campus, the cast of the Deltas, with the exception of John Belushi, who happened to be in New York, working on Saturday Night Live, accepted an invitation from a group of girls to a real frat party at Oregon's SAE house. When they arrived there, the real fraternity members treated them with hostility, and a brawl ended up ensuing. All this started when James Widows threw a cup of beer on some drunken football players. Widows ended up getting a few of his teeth knocked out during the course of this fight. Bruce McGill got punched a bunch of times in the head and received a black eye for this. When John Belushi returned to the set and he learned of the fight, he had to be physically restrained from seeking revenge on these football players. This real-life incident proved emblematic of the members and character of the Delta House. These actors that played the Deltas harassed the actors who played the Omegas off-screen as well. They wanted to keep up the feelings of animosity between these two character sets. The core of the group of Deltas, D-Day, Otter, Boone, Hoover, Flounder, and Pinto, actually traveled up to the filming site 
a week early. This was all done at the director's request. He wanted this group to emotionally bond together so that their friendship would look completely genuine in the film. Filmed for a total of about $3 million, this movie garnered an estimated gross of more than $141 million in the form of theatrical rentals. And this doesn't include the merchandising that went along with it, making it one of the highest grossing comedies of all time. Take another look at Animal House. It's always a fun watch. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.